guys. So I just filmed my do-it-yourself spa and stocking video, so I look exactly the same as I do in that video, except I took my scarf off that I had in that video because I'm drinking this hot tea and I'm getting really hot. Like, my room is so hot right now. It's like 3 o'clock in the morning. It's been such a long day. I'm really tired. Um, I should be asleep right now, but instead I was up playing with my camera. And I thought to myself, I really want to start a new series on my photography obsession. Bless you, Pinecone. Because for 2010, I started my Glitterature series. I think I started that like this year. And it was this new series on this channel where I did book reviews. Well, my new kind of thing that I want to start doing videos on is film photography. I have been a new recent... Um, discoverer of analog film again. Obviously, if you're my age, when we were really little, we all had film cameras before digital kind of became the main thing. And I mostly had disposables, and then you would take the film into the store and do like the one hour photo. I did have one Polaroid when I was really little, but I kind of wanted to start a new series for 2011 that I'm going to call my Vintage Glitz series that's going to be all about photography. The reason I'm calling it Vintage Glitz is because for Christmas this year, I'm asking for a vintage film camera, and so it will probably start going in that direction. The camera I'm shooting on right now is a toy camera that is from the 60s, but obviously the one I have is not from the 60s. It is still considered a vintage camera, but I actually want to get a used film SLR camera from like the 80s or the 70s, like one of the older ones, because they're just made differently than ones you can get today. So the one I have that I've been shooting on that I love is the Lomography Diana Dreamer. It looks like this. It's a beautiful like minty green camera. And the Diana cameras are especially known for creating really romantic soft focus photography. So it creates pictures that are a little bit blurry sometimes. Sometimes they have light leaks. They're very imperfect, but that is why they've become so popular. This camera was a novelty gift in the 1960s. It wasn't a real camera. It was considered a toy camera. It obviously worked, but it was plastic. It wasn't really meant to be precise. And today, those imperfections, and because it's plastic and it has a plastic lens, it kind of has created this entire new branch of photography. And a lot of professional photographers will use this on shoots now because it creates really cool images. It has a very distinct Diana style picture. So I got one of these. I am so in love with it. I got this one at Urban Outfitters because I loved the color combination and it was an Urban Outfitters exclusive. Lomography.com, which is the company that has these, does not have this color combination, but they have so many. So they have like black ones and white ones and red ones and gold ones and any color combination you want. But I just thought this this one was really vintagey and girly and it was my favorite one. So this is the one that I wanted. Um, it's all manual. It uses 120 film, which is a little bit harder to find. It's more expensive and it's definitely harder to find a place that will develop it because it's just a more difficult film. But I have a couple different ones. This is color negative 120, 400 ISO. I have black and white in 100 and I have color negative in 100. So just different kinds to play with. I've actually bought a 35 millimeter back for the back of my Diana, which you can buy on Lomography's website. As you can see, it says Diana 35 millimeter back. And with this back, it actually allows you to use 35 millimeter film, which is the film like that everyone is used to seeing in the little canisters. It's much easier to find to this day. You can find in like every drugstore and it's a lot easier to get developed because you can take it to those one hour photo labs and they know what to do with it. Whereas with the 120, they don't always know how to do it. Um, most of them do, but you kind of have to like tell them it's not 35 millimeter film. So right now I have a 35 millimeter 400 ISO roll in here and I have a couple more that I need to get developed. I have not shot with the 120 yet because I wanted to practice on the uh, 35 millimeter just because it's cheaper and kind of like see what kind of pictures I can come up with and then move on to the 120 because I can just take this back off and the camera will take 120 film again. If you guys are interested, like I don't know how many of you guys are into this kind of stuff. I can do like a little series on how to use this camera. It's a little bit difficult. I mean, it's not difficult, but I definitely had to do research when I got it. I didn't just like know how to use it right away because it has different settings like N and B. I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know what N and P was on the back. I didn't know how to load it. You know, all those little things like it's just 
I kind of had to like research and learn. So I can do like little videos on it if you guys are interested. This camera is not expensive. This one was like 50, but if you go to urbanoutfitters.com, they have a couple versions on sale for like 35. So it's not an expensive camera. It's just whether you're interested in like dealing with film because it is a more, it's not instant. It's not instant gratification the way digital is. You can't delete your mistakes. You have to wait for it to be developed, which can take some time, especially with the 120 because I think I'm going to have to send it off to get it developed. I'm sure there are places in LA really close to me that will develop it, but I found this website called thedarkroom.com that um, is supposed to be really good with developing like 120 film like they're like professional. So um, it also came with a lens cap. So when I'm traveling, the lens doesn't get busted up, but I kind of like it without the lens cap. And um, I'm definitely going to be expanding my camera family. I kind of have like this new love for it, and I want so many different cameras. I want to get a couple more Dianas. I want to get a Holga. I want to get um, a Diana Mini. I just, there's like so many that I want. So I want to get a Polaroid, which is so funny because if you watched a video I did back in October, I basically like make fun of Polaroids. And it... It was, it's so weird how all of a sudden it like snapped and I'm like, I want a Polaroid. There's also an instant back. You can get to the back of it. It's another back, like the 35 millimeter back. You can use Fuji Instax film and actually use it like a Polaroid, but it will have like the Diana, like dreamy kind of feel to it. So it's just a really cool camera. There's a lot of options and there's a lot of different things you can do with it. It's um, really, really amazing pictures have come out of this. I will insert a picture that's like my inspiration picture. I've Tumblered about it, which is another thing I wanted to talk about. I started a Tumblr for my photography obsession. If you follow me on Twitter, I'm sure you've seen me tweet about it, but I haven't mentioned it on YouTube. It's girlinawhimsicalland.tumblr.com. And there's this picture, it's of the Eiffel Tower and it's a double exposure. So there's no Photoshopping. It's done with this camera. And it's basically a picture of the Eiffel Tower. And then instead of advancing her film, she took another picture of like a flower bush. And the two like imposed on top of one another and created this beautiful, beautiful picture that you would see someone create in Photoshop. And yeah, you'd be impressed. But like there's a whole different level of art and film that you don't get in digital. I just think it's like so much cooler. If you're interested in more videos about this, let me know in the comments below and I would love to see more videos on YouTube about this stuff because there's really not enough. So if you're into it, you should make videos about it too. So I'll see you guys later.